Hello, my name is Rickard, and in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to recreate this poster from Dune in Photoshop. So I was originally putting together a tutorial on how to create the blue eye effect from Dune, but in the course of this, I actually do cover quite a bit more on skin uh, blemish correction, frequency separation, dodging burning, color correction, color grading, and a lot more. So go ahead. If you want to follow along, I have included all the assets in a link in the description of this video. Download those and then let's get started. All right, let's go to File, Open. I'm going to open this Mahalat DNG file. It's a photo I took of a model. And the only thing I want to do here is just increase the exposure to 1.1. Increase the contrast to 42 and then go to vibrance and set it to minus 50. And the reason I want to take out a bunch of the color is because I'm going to be applying a heavy color grade and I don't want to compete with the colors in the original image. All right, then last thing, let's just make sure this is on 16 bit. Hit OK and then we'll hit open. All right, I'm going to make a copy and we'll call this spot correction. And that's the first thing we're going to do is just clean up some of these spots on her skin. So let's zoom in. I'm going to grab here the spot, spot healing brush. And this just allows me to paint over blemishes and it will use uh, Photoshop's AI to fix it. So let's quickly run through all these spots here. I'm going to fast forward through this. All right, I'm happy with that. The one thing that I need a different tool to fix is this one on the nose. The problem is if I paint over this, it's going to sample higher texture area. So what I'm going to do is switch to the healing brush tool. And with this tool, by holding down option, I can tell it where to sample information from. Just make sure it's taking information from a similarly focused area. So there you go. That is the spot correction done. The next step is frequency separation. And frequency separation is a great way to fix up skin for fashion or beauty photography. So to make a frequency separation, we have to split the layer into two separate layers, one with the high frequency and one with the low frequency. So let's go ahead and make two copies of this. We'll call this low frequency, and then we'll do Command J and call this one high frequency. Let's go ahead, turn off high frequency, go into low frequency and go to filter, blur, Gaussian blur. And I want to add a four pixel blur. So let's hit OK. Now I'm going to go back to my high frequency, go to image, apply image. And I want my layer source to be the low frequency. And I want this to be on subtract. And then I want the opacity to be 100, scale to be 2. I want the offset to actually be 0 and I want the RGB to be inverted, the blending to be on add. <laughs> Those other settings were for 8-bit, um, but these are the settings for 16-bit. So again, you want to make sure your source layer is your low frequency layer. You want invert turned on, blending mode on add, and scale to 2. Hit OK, and then we're going to change this layer to linear light. Now the combination of these two layers, if we turn, put those in a group, turn, on, turn them on and off, we should see no real obvious difference between this and the original. Um, but now we have this low frequency layer, which we can start blurring to get rid of some of the modeling in her skin. So one thing I always do when I do frequency separation is make a copy and then call this fixed low frequency. That way, I can always adjust the opacity of this after I've made my corrections to tone down or tone up the effect. All right, now for the blurring step. 
I've seen people do it with a Gaussian blur where they'll go like this, add a big feather, select large areas like this, and then go to filter, blur, Gaussian blur, and start blurring like this. But I, I really don't like the effect. Um, it gives it very much of a Instagram kind of get rid of all the skin defects look. So my preferred method is actually to use a mix brush. And with some settings, you can turn a mix brush into a Gaussian blur brush. So first, you want to make sure it's on clean brush. Next, you want to make sure this is turned off. And this one, which is clean after each stroke, is turned on. And then you can put the wet, load, mix, and flow all on 50. Um, and then you can adjust your flow depending on how much of the effect you want. Uh, maybe we can start with 50, and if that's too much, you can always take it down. Um, in terms of the brush, you wanna use a soft brush, and you can adjust the size based on the area that you're painting. So if I'm painting a big area, I'm gonna use a big brush, but if I'm painting a small area, like here, I'll use a small brush. All right, so with those basics in place, Let's go ahead and smooth out the skin following the contours and the existing shapes of the face. I'm going to kind of fast forward through this. Okay, I'm pretty w happy with that. You will notice though that it does still have that Instagram filter effect. And um, that is a big reason why I always make a copy so that I can just tone down the effect. Normally I put it on somewhere between 60 and 70%. And that allows the original image to show through enough to give a more natural look. Here you can see the before face corrections after we haven't really changed her face we've just cleaned it up okay next we're going to do some dodging and burning let's call a layer dodge and burn and i'm going to put this layer on soft light now what we're going to do is go on a normal brush i want to select a soft relatively large brush something like this and for this, I wanna set both the opacity and the flow to 15%. I want it to be really low when I start, um, and then I can always work it up by adding more layers. So let's start with this really low. And for this, you want to contour the, sh the face just very subtly. Uh, I almost liken it to putting makeup on a woman. Um, you're gonna do it very subtly and you want to follow the similar contours that women follow when they put makeup on. So just look at some makeup tutorials, um, look for contouring tutorials on YouTube. It'll give you a, a very good idea of where you should be adding light and shadow to a female face. This cheek area you're going to want to add some light and then underneath it you want to add a little more shadow and then also right around here in the eyes you kind of want to add a little more shadow there so i'd say something like this looks pretty good and let's turn it on and off you can see how that's contouring the shape nice thing about having a layer like this is you can always turn it up or down in terms of the amount and if you want it much stronger, you can also make a copy of the layer and it'll just double the effect. But in this case, I think around 90% looks pretty nice. And the next thing we're gonna do is add our background. So let's go ahead and change this group to Final Woman. And what I'm gonna do here is I'm actually gonna just throw the background on top and then mask her out of it. So let's go File, Place Embedded, I'm going to grab this Jeremy Bishop file, just scale it up, and I'm going to move it a little bit to the left here so that these sand dunes are visible, probably something like that. 
And then I want to give it just a little bit of a blur because the uh, photo of our subject uses a rel relatively shallow depth of field. It's probably something like this. And then I also do want to add a blue gradient, but uh, we could do that either before or after. Let's go ahead and do it now. So we'll call this sky gradient. And I'm going to select just a blue color here. Something around here. Something around there. And then from the top, just kind of down, we'll do this. There you go. And then I'm going to clip this so that it's just on this layer. That's going to be important when we add a mask. So to add the mask, I'm going to option click on one of these back layers, go into my selection tool, and we'll go into one of the smart selection tools. That'll give us select subject. I'm going to click on that and go into select and mask. If I zoom in here, you can see the edge is pretty harsh. So I'm going to add a 30 pixel edge detection on this. Now this is much more than I would usually use, but because this entire edge is really soft from the soft focus, I think I can get away with using 30 pixels here. All right, I'm going to add a little bit of feather and just shift the edge inside just a little, so maybe 15%. All right, I'm gonna hit OK. And let's go ahead and option click on that eyeball again. And on this layer, I'm gonna hold down option click on the mask. That's gonna show her through the mask. So there you have it, that's her. Next, I want to make some of this light kind of intrude on her because she feels too much just plopped on top. I'm gonna to show you a quick trick on how to do that. We'll call this intruding light. And using the same blue color, I'm going to go back on my gradient tool and select the radial gradient and just make a radial gradient like this. Make sure um, all the edges are nicely blurred out to nothing. Now I can move this around along the edge and kind of just add some blue there. So I'm going to go Command-T for transform, stretch this out a bit, turn it, and then just kind of go right there. That's gonna make that edge look a little more realistic, like there's some actual environment here and that she's inside of it. Okay, next we're gonna do a color grade. And this is we're gonna do a lot of the work to get this looking more like our reference dune poster. So let's go ahead and add a curves layer. And we're gonna manipulate all the channels but the one that's going to do the most work for us is red. So I'm actually going to leave that one to last um, so I can explain why red is so important for this color grade. But starting with RGB, I'm going to just pump up the whites a tiny bit, add a little bit of an S curve here. Just come down a tiny bit toward the middle here, and then maybe bring up the bottom just a tiny bit. So something like this. Then I'm going to go to the green, and for the green, I don't need to do too much. I'm going to add a dot there, maybe just bring up the middle a tiny bit, and maybe bring down the very end there. Just keep that straight so we're not getting rid of the magenta in our shadows there. And then finally, blue, I want to add a dot here because I don't want to affect this so much but I do want to bring the middle down just a little, just to add a little more yellow in there, and then lift up the bottom just a tiny bit. Okay, now we come to red. The opposite of red is cyan, and this color grade for the poster has cyan in the highlights, which means we need to take the red down, and it has red in the shadows, meaning we need to take the red up on this end. So essentially, we're flattening this curve, something like this, but leaving the middle area more intact. So let's go ahead and do the top end first. I want it to come down to about there, and then I want this end here to come up to about there. And then we're going to manipulate this back into its original shape toward the center here. So something like this. 
And there you can see it's starting to get the, that look of the posters there. And let's look at the before and after. You can see that's starting to look really good. I think I'll go to the RGB and just manipulate this a little bit more. Get down a tiny bit. And I'm doing like minutia corrections here. Just trying to get those shadows a little stronger. But I'm pretty happy with that. So there you can see the before and after, and you can see how much that one curves layer is doing to give the whole image a different color grade. Okay, next I wanna color the eyes blue. So I'm gonna show you a trick on how to do that that's pretty cool. Um, the first step is we're going to use our pen tool to draw around the eye. Now it's important here that we just get the eye proper, meaning the actual eyeball, the wet eyeball. If you've read Dune, you know that the blue in the eyes is actually a dye that's dropped into the eyes to prevent sunlight, so or to help with sunlight, kind of like biological sunglasses. So we're going to put the blue right where it belongs in there. Let's go ahead and do the other eye as well. There you go. All right, now I'm gonna go on to my black arrow path selection, select both of them, go here and add a solid color. You can see there what it's done. It's used the paths to create a vector mask. I'm just gonna push this all the way to the brightest blue here and change this to color. So there you can see it's achieving the effect we want, but this looks more like the original Dune where the effects weren't very good. So we're gonna adjust this. So first let's select our layer, go to properties and just add about a 15 pixel feather. That's gonna get our edges not to be so uh, sharp. Kind of see how that looks there. Maybe not so much, maybe 10 pixels. And yeah, I'm happy with that. All right, next thing we're gonna do is use the blend if option. So I'm gonna just push this up here so I can see it. Double click here and that's gonna bring up my blend if options. So that's down here. And basically this says, if anything on this blue layer is darker than this point here, don't blend, right? So the more I move this, the more my dark areas are not being affected by the blue. And conversely, if I move this, the light areas aren't affected by the blue. So we want something in between. So what we're going to do is just push this until we start seeing a little bit of the light here and push this until we start seeing a little bit of the brown in here, meaning no longer see the blue. And then we're going to hold down option and just feather these two. And I don't mind if they cross over like this. It actually gives a nice kind of effect that looks like it's coloring the middle without affecting the highlights and shadows, which is realistically what it would look like. Um, and also you can see by adjusting these how much of the blue is there. So I think that looks quite good. The other nice thing about this is I can double click here and actually change my color. If I want it to be a little more electric blue, I can push that up. I want it to be more green, any color, the blending options are doing all the work to make it integrate with the layer below. So whatever our color are applied doesn't really matter. But obviously we wanna match the movie, so we're gonna go with this nice blue color. Next thing, I wanna add a little more blue to our irises. To do that, I'm gonna go File, Open, and I have another file here from Eric McLean on Unsplash. I'm gonna use my circular marquee and just cut out her iris right there. Let's do Command J. I'm gonna fill this with black 
So I just see the iris. And I want to fade in the edge. I'm going to show you a cool trick on how to do that. Just going to command click on the thumbnail so I get my selection. Go to select, modify, contract. Contract it by 8 pixels. And then go to select, modify, and feather. And then you want to do it by double the amount. So 8, I'm going to do 16. Hit OK. And then add a mask to this layer. So there you can see it's uh, kind of given a vignette to the whole layer. But if I select my mask here and do Command M for ma uh, curves <laughs> and just bring down the bottom, you can see that I now can control where my edge is. So I'm looking at this bottom down here. I'm going to move it until that's no longer in there. So there, hit OK. And then with my mask still selected, I'm just going to paint out this top here. And then we'll do convert to smart object and drag this into our file. I'm going to put this on screen and then drag it to where it needs to be in her eye. Right about there. We'll just make this a bit smaller. Um, it also bugs me that the pupil is not in the center. So I'm going to turn this warp on. Just kind of drag the pupil by itself and drag it more toward the center here. I think right there is good. And finally, I'm going to rasterize this. I don't need a smart object anymore. And let's put it back on screen. The one other thing I do want to do is add a curve to it. So with this curve, I want to make it significantly darker. Just one hint of it in here. So we'll do this and then maybe go to red, pull that down so it makes it more cyan, and then maybe bump up the blue just a tiny bit. Ooh, that's really nice. It is too much, but I love the effect, but I want it, you know, five times more subtle. So what I'm going to do is add a mask to this and with a big black brush, just kind of paint in the top till I'm just seeing a hint of this at the very bottom like that. And that might be too little. Let's go back on our brush with the white. Just paint a little more back in there. All right, so we'll call this blue pupil, or sorry, blue iris. I'm going to make a copy of that with Command J and drag it to this eye. And I'll just rotate this one so it's not exactly the same. Good, I'm happy with that. All right, last thing I want to do with the eyes is just make a really obnoxious highlight in here. So I'm just going to make a weird shape. Mm. Whoops. Oh make sure I have no feather here. All right, I'm just going to make a weird shape like this. Make the same in here. Um, because my light is kind of coming from this side, I want the lights to be there. And then I'm going to add a curve layer and just crank it up. Maybe go to red, pull in some cyan, and then pull in some blue. And then all I have to do is go in here can actually make this even more obnoxious. Go into my mask and just add a feather until I don't see the shape anymore. I just see the highlight. Something like that. And then I can always take this down if I think it's too strong. So maybe something like this. Pretty happy with that. Next, I need to add a bottom gradient down here. So to do that, I'm going to go onto my gradient tool, make sure I'm on linear gradient. We'll call this bottom gradient. And I'm just going to select the color from here. Kind of want a darkish color. So maybe something like this. I'll just start from the bottom and go to about where her mouth is. Like that. Do it one more time. Good. All right. Then I can do command. Click on the thumbnail. That's going to give me my selection. And I can turn that into a mask and just bring down my curve down here. And then I want to take the opacity on this down. So we still have some of that original image showing through. All right. And then before I add the lettering, I want to add some film grain. Uh, my preferred method is actually just going here, pattern. And in my Nucle patterns, I have a film grain. And I can just do this and then take the opacity of it down. But if you don't have the Nucle patterns, I'm going to show you another way to do it. 
that's to add a layer we can call this noise uh, make our layer 50% gray fill the layer go to filter noise add noise um, the amount isn't that important let's say 10 for now I want a Gaussian monochromatic I'm gonna zoom in here and just add one blur like this and then we can go here and put this on overlay there you go we've now added a strong blur and if we want this stronger all we have to do is go command M and move both of these toward the center you want to equal you want to move them equally so that you're not adding contrast to the image just adding noise so there you go there you can see the before and the after that's going to add the noise and next i just want to put in a title here i'm not going to find a font uh, we just have one letter form so i can create it pretty easily let's call this letter i'm going to go to my path uh, shape tool make sure I'm on path and then just kind of create a shape like this zoom in here you can see these little dots on the corner that determines your edge radius I'm gonna pull those all the way into the center and then go onto my direct selection tool and select these two segments here and delete them so there you go I have now my letter form Maybe you want to make this just a little shorter, something like this. And pretty happy with that. Maybe a little bit longer. And here what I'm doing is I'm just selecting the anchor points that I want to move. So those are the two anchor points. Those are the ones I'm selecting. And I'm just moving those with my arrow. So that's good. Next, we need to turn this vector information into pixel information. So let's make sure our foreground color is white. Let's go on a brush, select this round solid brush, and change our pixels to 20. Next, I'm going to go to path. And you see this little icon here? That will stroke your path with your selected brush. So there you have it. And now I can just copy this, hold down Option, start dragging it. We'll do Command U, turn this into a U. Turn this into an N, and then turn this into an E, and this first one into a D. Whoops. There you go. All right, now I'm going to take all these, distribute them, center them up, move them down just a bit, and I'm going to merge them with Command E. We'll call this Dune Lettering. And I'm going to apply one of my layer styles to it. Um, I have a whole set of Nucle titling styles, which you can purchase. Um, if you don't have it, I have included the one I'm using in the assets for this tutorial. Just go here and go to import styles. And in the assets, you'll see the sample styles. Download that. And when you look at, to the word at the very bottom, you'll see this strange doctor style. Click on that and it'll apply it. Good. Last thing is this little eclipse here. So let's go on to our circular elliptical tool, make a new layer. We'll call this Eclipse. I'm going to add a circle here. And I'll just use my smart guides to center this up. Fill it in with white. And let's maybe move it in a little bit so it's centered. I think there looks good. All right, now I'm going to add a few effects to this. I'm going to add a color overlay, make it black. I'm going to add an outer glow to give like a white glow around it. And then I'm going to use a drop shadow set to screen with zero distance to give it a yellow glow, more like an eclipse. All right, let's hit OK. And then in my font library, I have a font or sorry, a flare called Flare 35. Um, I'll include a link to my whole flare library in the description of this video, but I have included this in the assets. Let's go ahead and drag that in here. Put this on screen. I want to put this directly behind there, and then we'll just scale it down. There. And put it behind the eclipse. 
That looks pretty nice. And I can do Command M. Again, we'll bring up my curve. Here I want to take down the magenta a little bit. So I'm going to go to my green. Just bring that up a tiny bit. That's going to add more yellow. Take some magenta out. And also in RGB, I'm just going to make the lights a little bit lighter and the darks a little bit darker. Like that. And there you have it. Here's our before and here's our after. So there you have it. That's how you recreate the poster for Dune in Photoshop. And if you enjoyed this tutorial, please subscribe to my channel, leave a like, leave a comment, share this video, turn on your notifications, do all that stuff that you do for the content creators that you enjoy. And if you're interested in my full packs of assets, um, some of which you saw in the course of this tutorial, I have included a link to my new tools bundle, which includes a whole bunch of tools as well as training on how to use them in Photoshop. So I've included a link to that. And otherwise, here are some videos that you can check out. Until next time.